What is going on Babylonians? It's me, Song to Raise back another synced video to be able to bring to you. And today we're going to be covering over the gear chips. Now, gear chips are basically little kind of perks that you can put into your loadout. And basically these are ones that you can level up over time as well to be able to become more effective. The idea behind this is kind of similar to like the uh, the choose a class or pick a class system uh, when you play something like Call of Duty, for example, where you had access to three different perks or th three categories of perks and you had to choose one from each. And that gave you a certain benefit when it came to battle it's basically the same kind of system except for instead of it just being the pro like the pro perks when you had like modern warfare 2 and you could just choose like one and they would just upgrade to like one version you can upgrade these several times uh throughout all the way up to level 50 and basically it's just the, it's the continual grind for these to be able to actually get them up to the maximum effectiveness that you can now before we get any further make sure you have dropped a like and a subscribe on the channel and really does help the channel out and let's have a breakdown of this Alright, so first and foremost, basically when it comes to gear chips, you want to be able to look into what you want as an orange, what you want as like a teal or a blue, and what you want as a red perk. Now, some of these are going to be better than others, and some of these are going to be more specific to certain runners. Because when it comes to like the red perk, for example, there are ways to be able to increase the effectiveness of certain nanos. Now, if you were going into uh, kind of like a fight and you didn't have that nano equipped, that's going to be a dead mod for you. So therefore, you want to be able to actually go into one. You want to pre-plan and be able to take in something that's a effective and they're definitely going to be your, worth your while. Now some of these are definitely better on paper when it comes to certain ones, especially when you make certain comparisons, but once again these are going to be effective depending on your playstyle, so therefore let's actually have a look into the orange uh, perks first and then we'll work our way down from there. Alright, so first up in the orange we have auto reload. Now where this adds ammo to your magazine when you kill an enemy. So basically the idea is that you, you also consistently keep your ammo or your magazine topped up the more you actually start killing. And uh, I feel like this is a great one for an aggressive playstyle. Uh, but the interesting part is when you see the dead sector bonuses. So you also have increased to damage, you have critical chance and you have critical, uh, critical damage as well. Now these bonuses don't come into effect when it comes to uh, kind of like standard PvP, but I believe it comes into effect when it comes into PvE. So there are ways to be able to increase your effectiveness when you actually go into a fight in PvE to be able to actually do that portion as opposed to actually seeing these bonuses when you go into PvP. So that per first part is always going to be active and then the second part is more your PvE kind of side of things. So moving on from there, you have access to Nano to Ammo, where killing an enemy by hitting its weak point guarantees it will drop ammo. This is also a great way to be able to actually keep your ammo supply up. And when you actually do play Synced, you will find times that if you use one particular gun more than others, you will actually start running out of ammo and you will need to go find an ammo box. So therefore having this means that you don't have to rely on that and it doesn't actually put you into a position where you have to be able to actually go searching and also be able to run out of ammo in a crucial fight. Next up we have Quick Reload, which uh, allows you to be able to reload faster. Obviously this is just going to be great as standard, and this is the one that I kind of went for straight away, because being able to reload faster in any kind of fight is always going to be a god-given bonus. So therefore, this is the one I've always gravitated towards, but uh, obviously you can make your own choices. Let me know in the comment section down below, after we've gone through all of these, what would you choose in terms of perks? What would you actually potentially go into battle with? Next up we have Reload All Weapons, where reloading any weapon may automatically reload all of your weapons. So the idea is that you kind of uh, use, go through your whole inventory, which is two primaries and your secondary, and basically in any one of those that gets reloaded has a chance to be able to reload all of your equipped weapons so you can actually keep uh, going back and forth and cycling through all of them again. Next up we have Steady Hand, where, which reduces the crosshair spread while moving, so you have two forms of aiming when it comes to uh, in sync. so you have your, uh, your first person shooting, so you're basically able to look down the sights, which is going to be your more accurate, but you also have the chance to be able to hold down the right click as standard to be able to actually go into kind of like a shoulder mounted view, it basically tightens up uh, the uh, kind, of, kind of like the crosshair, and the more you move, obviously the wider those kind of like spread out, so therefore with Steady Hand you actually don't get as many penalties, and therefore it is actually a bit more accurate to be able to go and a bit more reliable to actually go into that kind of way of aiming. Next up we have Dead Eye Shooter which reduces crosshair spread while aiming as well. Uh, so it's kind of similar but obviously it's just, uh, just a, ge a generic uh, reduced crosshair spread. And then next up uh, we have uh, Penetrating Ammo. Uh, after reloading your first three bullets can penetrate multiple targets. Personally I didn't really gravitate towards this one, I just didn't really see the usefulness in this considering how quickly certain enemies do die uh, and also what are the chances that you're actually going to be able to penetrate something that's worthwhile behind them. So therefore I have always steer clear of this one but uh, that's not to say that it's a bad choice or any means, I just think there's some better, better uh, alternatives out there as well. 
Now if we have a quick look at the teal section, the teal section is going to be a bit more uh, kind of like mobility. So whereas the first one was all about your guns, the second one's going to be more about your actual character. Uh, so and uh, so what, what we've got first is the second chance. When knocked down, killing a nano will revive you, and this has a cooldown. So basically if you ever find yourself in a position, because uh, when you actually do die the first time, or I say die, you won't, when you lose all of your health, you go into a down but not out stage, but this allows you to be able to pull out your pistol and continually fire. Uh, so obviously depending on the pistol that you actually do take in, depends on the rate of fire that they have. Now what you can actually do is while you're in that state, you can shoot a nano, and if you kill any version of a nano with this state, it will actually be able to pick yourself back up, and then be able to carry on the fight. So it's great utility, it's great to be able to actually put yourself out there, uh, but obviously this is very dependent if there are any nanos that are around you at the time, uh, but it can be very worthwhile and can actually save your teammates a little bit of hassle from being put into a disadvantage, um, kind of in terms of the position wise. Next up we have fast recovery where health and shield recover faster, this is just in standard, just in general. In terms of actual stats as to how much faster, unfortunately I don't know this, I've only had about an hour's worth of playtime in this. Uh, but once again, once we actually do get into the proper game, I will happily bring those stats wherever I can. So therefore, uh, just for the time being, just know that your health and your shield will recover faster. Next up we have Radia Flow, where you gain a small amount of Radia every 3 seconds. Now Radia is going to be the currency that allows you to be able to upgrade yourself, and allows you to be able to buy upgrades as well for your Nano. Uh, so therefore having Radia is actually a really good idea to be able to actually have, but is it worthwhile swapping a kind of like a, point, a perk that can actually help you out, like for example with Fast Recovery, to be able to keep yourself in the fight, is it worth that? Obviously that's uh, that's kind of like down to your actual playstyle. Me personally, I just didn't really find the worthwhile, but I did see that it actually was kind of worthwhile when it came to PvE. Uh, so it, it's, it's obviously that kind of like switch up that kind of swings and roundabouts, which, which game mode are you actually playing and which is going to be more effective. Next up we have more radia, which increases the size of radia drops just in general, so this allows you to be able to have more when you actually do find some pickups. So therefore this can also be a great one for PvE as well. Obviously it can be good for PvP because it allows you to be able to gear yourself up properly as well, and a lot faster. So therefore more radia is potentially a, a great one for PvP as well. Uh, but me personally, I want to go for something that's a little bit more combat uh, kind of oriented as well. Next up we have Quick Swap, which obviously pairs really, really nicely with the uh, well, one of the orange tiers, uh, which was uh, being able to actually just reload all of your weapons, because with Quick Swap you're allowed to swap your weapons faster. Uh, so this allows you to be able to actually do that playstyle where you can fire one gun, swap to another gun, fire that one, but obviously reload that, it reloads both of your guns, etc. So therefore Quick Swap potentially could be quite useful in that kind of scenario. Next up we have Quick Roll, which allows you to be able to roll faster and with a shorter cooldown time between rolls. Pretty much does what it says on the tin, so therefore, you, you know, I don't really feel like I really need to explain that anymore. And then lastly we have Offense to Defense, where you recover health when you kill an enemy. Uh, so therefore, once again, I don't have the details on that, I don't know exactly how much you actually recover. I can't imagine it will be all the way back up to full. Uh, so therefore, it's up to you to be able to decide which of these perks is going to be a best fit for yourself. Uh, and to be able to actually and then lastly we have the red tier perks and like i said the red tier perks are more uh the first few anyway are pretty much to aim towards what nanos you actually are planning on taking out and being able to increase their effectiveness when it comes to fights and then the last few are just kind of like generic boosts on top of that so when it comes to the first one we have the crusher boost which is going to obviously increase the effectiveness of your crusher and this gives them increased attack speed as well so unfortunately i don't know the exact details but you'll notice that all of these perks they have all been given different dead sector bonuses which allow you to be able to actually take those into pve as well uh, so increased attack speed for crushers, which are going to be your melee focused uh, crusher or melee focused nano. Therefore, obviously, this is going to be a great way to be able to go for if you were playing as Brother Abel. Next up, we have the suppressor boost, which uh, gives you a broader attack range for suppressors. So it makes them a little bit more deadly and a little bit more versatile when it actually comes to engaging targets. So therefore, th this would be a nice choice to be able to actually go for. Unfortunately, once again, I don't have any numerical data when it comes to this, but obviously this could be a nice choice if you were looking to be able to go with suppressors as your main nanos of choice. Next up we have Guardian Boost, which gives stronger shields for Guardians, so if you were going for a more defensive, kind of like static playstyle, therefore the Guardian would actually be a great choice, and this would actually be uh, a great choice for that Guardian as well, just to be able to have a stronger shield, just in general, to be able to take more of that incoming fire. And then next we also have, to be able to round off all the nanos so far, we have Seer Boost, which gives a larger scanning radius for Seers. So it gives you more intel, gives you more chance to be able to actually have that utility. And so therefore, this could be a great choice to be able to actually go out into the battlefield and always get the drop on your enemies.
Now, while the next three are still uh, sinks and nano kind of related, uh, they're not going to be increasing the effectiveness as such or the direct effectiveness of your nano. So the next ones are going to be auto revive, where your sink nano can revive itself. And that's just the standard. There's no data on this. There's no like mention of a cooldown or anything like that. It just means that your nano can actually pick itself back up off the floor if it ever gets downed. Next, we have range boost, which increases the deployment range of your sync nano. This once again is uh, once again no, it doesn't have numerical data. But what this is, when you actually have it on your arm and you go to deploy them, they they have a certain range that they can they can only go before they have to automatically deploy. In terms of that, so you can't like deploy them over the other side of the map, for example. They have a certain range from you to be able to do that, and then they start moving. So the range boost will allow you to have a much wider kind of range to be able to actually deploy them, maybe a little bit away from yourself to be able to actually start uh, uh, shooting from a different kind of uh, perspective or a different kind of angle or maybe a sear is put into a different kind of location and is actually hidden away while you actually run forward or something like that. There's different kinds of plays that can actually be done with that. So therefore, I, I, while I didn't necessarily go for it myself, uh, I, I can see potentially the versatility when it comes to that. So I will definitely be diving more into that when I actually get the chance. And then lastly, and this is going to be one of my personal favorites when it comes to this whole tree, is going to be in sync, where you get invincibility during syncing and also speeds up the syncing action. So the main time that you ever are kind of like stood still, the main time, time you are ever a target, is when you actually take out a prime nano. Once you take out a prime nano, it's very advantageous for you to actually go in there to be able to actually get them on your side, to be able to have your companion. One, because obviously they get benefits when you're on your arm, and two, because they provide combat of effectiveness and combat abilities while they're out and deployed as well. So therefore, the only time that you're ever kind of vulnerable is when you're actually doing the syncing process. And uh, while you're actually doing this, it one, not only does it speed it up, it also makes you invincible, which means that you aren't going to get interrupted while you do that. So therefore, it is very good. It's definitely going to be one of my favorites because I, the, the less time that I'm spent just stood there, just stood like in the open of a field or something like that, the better. So therefore, I do think in sync is a great one to be able to actually go for. Now the last thing to really touch on, and th this is something that we I kind of got a little bit of footage for, but uh, it just doesn't really show it off to the best of its extent, is going to be when it comes to research boosts. Now research boosts are there to be able to increase the effectiveness of your gear chips. Uh, so if you ever, like, you start off with some very slight low level kind of gear chips, and the idea to be able to get them all to level 50 is by using something like the free research boost, uh, which you do get on a timer, but you also have the ability to be able to get the, uh, the currency to be able to actually buy more research boosts. Uh, this is all in-game currency as well. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to get monetized in the future. Maybe that's something that actually could be done to be able to encourage you to be able to actually get a bit more stronger, a bit faster. Uh, but at the very least, this currency is in obtainable in-game, and that allows you to be able to actually buy research boosts as well in multiples of 10 if you do choose to. So in this one, I did actually get a free research boost. Uh, so once I click on it, it then comes up telling me which ability has been increased and basically the bar that's underneath its, uh, its name will also tell me how much it's increased by. Obviously everything in this current uh, early access beta that we actually got uh, that we got as content creators, everything was fully maxed so therefore we didn't actually get to see the progress. Uh, but just know that obviously you will actually start seeing progress but it's not going to be unheard of the fact that uh, we're going to get diminishing returns the higher level ability actually. And there you go, that is everything you need to know about gear chips when it comes to the game of Sync. So I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you've learned something useful with ourselves. If you did make sure you drop a like and a subscribe on the channel it really does help the channel out and that just leaves me to say keep yourself safe keep yourselves well and i'll see you all on our next video